Hey guys, and today we are going to be doing a full in-depth review of the all-new 2017 Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. With the Prius family dominating the hybrid market in sales numbers, Hyundai knew they had to introduce a vehicle to draw some of those fuel-conservative consumers over to the Hyundai brand. As a result, Hyundai introduced their own family of earth-loving green machines. Introducing the Ionic Trio. Currently, I am sitting inside of one of those Ionic triplets, the all new for 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. So let's see if Hyundai's Ionic can outclass the hybrid class leader in its own fuel sipping game. Now I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but now I have timestamps in the description box below. And I know that this video is a little bit on the long side, and I tried my very best to make it as short as possible, but this vehicle contains so much technology and equipment, and it's just such a feature-rich vehicle, I just had to include it all for you guys. So like I said, don't forget to check out the description box below and zoom to the sections you are most interested in. Now before I get this review rolling, I would like to thank Tony King at Rick Case Hyundai in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, for allowing me to review this vehicle for you guys. If you're interested in purchasing a brand new or used Hyundai and live in the South Florida area, don't hesitate to check them out. They will get you into the perfect Hyundai in no time. And remember that all of Drive and Be Driven's reviews are 100% honest and 0% biased. So uh, let's get started. Alright, here it is, the all new 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. Alright, so let's first talk about the exterior styling of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. So the Hyundai Ionic does take on Hyundai's design language that they did introduce for 2014, and that was the Fluidic Sculpture 2.0 design. And pretty much what that is, in my own words, is it makes the vehicle have a very conservatively elegant design with a hint of aggressiveness and I feel like the Hyundai Ionic really pretty much portrays that sculpture very well so if you do move a little bit closer in on the overall design on the front end right here you are going to see that it does feature Hyundai's very corporate front end grill design right here and this is Hyundai's hexagonal grill here and it's not as prominent as it is on other models it does have a lot more of a flowing design to it and and that is because Hyundai is trying to make this vehicle obviously more fuel efficient because that because that is pretty much the main purpose of this vehicle so you are going to see that it does have quite a bit of very smooth lines running all the way up the hood as well as right here very smooth all the way around the vehicle and that is going to help this vehicle get a coefficient of drag of 0 0.24 and that's not all also if you do come down here you are going to see that you do have LED lights here and it's going to be in sort of like an upside down L shape right here and then right here you do have wind curtains so it is going to allow the air to go and move around the vehicle a lot more efficiently and it is going to move around that wheel well a lot more efficiently as well if you do look at your headlight module right here you are going to see that you do have your projector beam halogen headlights right here and those are going to work as your low beams and if you do come to your high beams right here they are going to be halogen high beams right here and then if you do look right here you do have your incandescent turn signal indicator with a little swoosh right here that is going to run right around into there so overall the headlight design on the 2017 Hyundai Ionic is very attractive looking also I'm noticing right here that you do have this little blue 
portion right here that is surrounding your high beam light right there so that is also going to look very attractive right here you do also have another accent character line that does run all the way up to right here giving the headlight module a little bit more of a sleek and clean look to it but like I said this does have that fluidic sculpture 2.0 design and you are going to see that aggressiveness right here specifically with that very strong character line that does turn right back up and it gives it that aggressive look but then if you look at the entire vehicle as a whole it does have that very conservatively elegant look all right so if we come right down here you are going to see that you do have some more of that smooth portion right here on your bumper and then right down here you do have some more of those openings right here to allow more air to come right in to the Hyundai Ionic right there now right here you are going to notice that this portion right here is not functional so right all the way down here from this Hyundai logo below is not functional but right here is functional and on either side of the Hyundai logo you are going to have your active grill shutters right here and that is also going to allow for the air to flow much more efficiently around the vehicle also if we do look under the vehicle I'm not sure if you guys can see but Hyundai did cover the bottom of the floor with plastic there so it is going to make the vehicle pretty much slip through the air a lot more seamlessly as well so it is going to help with that zero 0.24 coefficient of drag all right so if we do walk down the side right here you are going to see that you do have this character line that does start right at the tip right here which is very traditional to pretty much all Hyundais it is going to start right at this real corner right here and on the grill and it is going to run all the way up and merge right into your a pill you are going to see that all across the Hyundai lineup now if you're looking right here you are going to see that it does say blue drive and that is Hyundai's green efficiency technology and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on but right there that is going to pretty much let everyone know that you are driving a hybrid but really if you do look at the exterior styling at a glance I mean it doesn't really look like a hybrid if you ask me I mean obviously because I know it's a hybrid it looks like a hybrid but when this is rolling down the road it can easily blend in with the rest of the vehicles out there really if you ask me but Hyundai does want this vehicle to be very fuel efficient so they are going to put a few of these badges around the vehicle pretty much letting a few people know that this is a little bit more of a fuel efficient vehicle. If you do look at your rim design here this is also going to be a dead giveaway that this vehicle is more oriented towards eco-friendliness and pretty much aerodynamics because these rims do have that sort of like a very slip streamy design right here so you do have these portions that do merge right into this is sort of like a five spoke wheel design right here you do have one two three three four five right here and then right here it is sort of like a imitation carbon fiber material right there and then right here you do have sort of like that metallic silver portion accenting right there and then right here you do have your glossy black portion in the center with your Hyundai logo right there and then inside of there you do have disc brakes and that is going to be on all four of your wheels no drum brakes here on the Hyundai Ionic and all of those disc brakes are going to have your regenerative braking system so that is also going to help with fuel economy but we'll talk about the regenerative braking system a little bit later on in the review also these wheels here are going to be 15 inch wheels if you do go for the top of the line limited trim you will get larger 17 inch wheels but on the SEL which is the model that we have here as well as the blue model you will get these 15 inch wheels right here and these are going to be riding on 195 with tires so they are going to be a little bit more narrow than some other other vehicles out there so it is going to help you pretty much get more fuel efficiency since those tires are low rolling resistance so working right here at your mirror module right here you are going to have a turn signal indicator right here and I believe this is going to be LED turn signal indicators and then you are going to have pretty much a very traditional mirror design here it is going to be body colored on the upper portion and you are going to have your matte plastic on the bottom portion it's going to have like a low gloss material to it so right here you are going to see that you do have this strong character line that does run all the way down the side of the Hyundai Ionic hybrid and it does meet up with your taillight back there and then right here you are going to see that you do have your smart key access system and you do just push right there and it will unlock your doors and you do have that for only your front driver and your front passenger you do not get it for your rear seat passengers but I mean that's pretty much traditional for all of the vehicles vehicles in this class so right here you are also going to see that you do have a sloping roof line on the Hyundai Ionic and that is also going to help with aerodynamics as well but if we do move back just a little bit 
from the vehicle, you are going to see that the Hyundai Ioniq has a very slipstreamy design to the overall exterior styling as well. Looking at the front end, it's not actually what you may expect. It does have a semi-blunt front, so it is going to give it that more of that elegant and mature look on the front. We're also going to have a moderately sized hood right here. If I do lower down just a little bit, you're going to see that this hood does slope down just a little bit towards the front to help with aerodynamics, but it is going to be a moderate size. It's not going to be overly long, but it's not going to be overly short either. If you are looking at your A pillar here, it is raked back quite a ways. It is going to have like its highest point just about right there, right over the driver's head. So that's pretty interesting. And then right here, your roof line is going to slope down right onto your rear spoiler back there. But we'll talk about the rear end in just a little bit. And then your rims do fit the wheel wells fairly well. We do have the 15 inch wheel design on the Hyundai Ioniq here. If you do go for those 17 inch wheels, they are going to fit the wheel well even better. But we do have these 15 wheels right here. Now, if we do come a little bit closer here, I did also want to point out this plastic insert on the bottom portion of the side of the doors right here as well it also is going to give the vehicle a little bit more of that sporty look to it even though it is a hybrid all right so coming to the rear end of the hyundai ionic you are going to see that it actually looks sort of familiar to me especially if you did pretty much know the hyundai veloster it is going to have a very similar look to the rear end to the hyundai veloster so I, Looking at the Hyundai Ioniq, you are going to see that it does draw some of those character traits from the Veloster. So looking at your taillights right here, you are going to see that you do have LED taillights. And these are only going to be LED taillights if you do go for the SEL trim and above. That base blue trim is not going to come with your LED taillights. And your LED taillights are going to come with an incandescent is not going to come with an incandescent turn signal indicator. It's actually going to come with an LED turn signal indicator. So if you do come to this side, um, I'm going to show you that right here, you do have that LED turn signal indicator and sort of like a C shape. And then right in there, you are going to have your reverse light and that is going to be an incandescent reverse light right there and i really like the design that hyundai went for with the tail lights on the 2017 hyundai ionic hybrid all right so right here you are also going to see that you do have your spoiler design here and this is going to be standard on all hyundai ionics it is going to help with the overall aerodynamics of the vehicle that is pretty much why it looks like it is a part of the vehicle and it's not like an add-on or anything like that because there's no options where you cannot have the spoiler and then if you do look right here you are going to see that you do have your hyundai low Logo. right below there you are going to have your trunk release pad right here it is going to be a button and then you are also going to have your reverse camera right here which comes standard on all Hyundai Ionics and you are going to have Ionic reading right below there and I really like how they did position this in the center very similar to what they did with the Veloster they positioned it right in the center and then right over here to the left it does say Rick case because that is exactly where I am at I'm at Rick case Hyundai thank you so much for allowing me to review this vehicle for you guys and then right here we do have where it says hybrid and this vehicle like I said is a hybrid and from the rear end I mean it looks like a hybrid because most hybrids are going to have that split window design so we do have a large window on the upper portion and then a smaller window on the bottom portion right here and we'll talk about visibility when we do get inside of the Hyundai Ionic so looking at the lower portion bumper right here you are going to see that you do have some more of these character lines right here pretty much merging right into your reflector being right here and this is a little bit similar to what's found on the front end grill design as well so I really like how there is very lots of consistency throughout the vehicle and then right here are going to have this glossy black material that does run all the way down the side of the Ionic and that is very attractive looking as well it pretty much mimics the front end grill there as well and then right here you do have a pretty neat looking catamaran line right here that does curve up and then run all the way down the side and overall looking at the rear end of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic, it looks fairly attractive looking. Now, the first time I saw it, I felt like it looked a little bit frumpy, but looking at it in person, it actually looks fairly attractive looking. I feel like it really suits the vehicle very, very well. All right, now I did also want to go through a, just a really quick rundown of the overall dimensions of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic because I found it 
fairly interesting so the height of this vehicle if you are looking at it from the front of the vehicle the height is going to be just about 56.4 inches which is just about two inches lower than something like the toyota prius so it is going to have a little bit more of a low down and planted stance also the length of this vehicle is just about 176 inches which is just about three inches shorter than the prius so a lot of these dimensions are pretty much suggesting that it is going to be smaller than the prius also you are going to see that it is just about seven inches shorter than the Corolla as well so if you're looking at something like a Toyota Corolla or even the Hyundai Elantra it is going to be just about seven to nine inches shorter than those vehicles and if you are looking at the wheelbase which is pretty much from the center of the front wheel right there to the center of the wheel right here that is going to be just about 106.3 inches which is pretty decent so that is pretty much going to be very in line with pretty much all of the other vehicles in its class it is going to be just about the same as the prius but it is going to be ever so slightly longer than something like your ford c-max now if you are looking at the width of this vehicle we are going to look at the rear end for the width and the width of this vehicle is going to be just about 71.7 inches which is wider than the prius by 2.5 inches so it is lower and shorter but it is wider than the prius and it's just about two inches wider than the elantra sedan as well and it is very noticeable as well i do see how like the side body does flare out just a little bit more giving a little bit more of a masculine look and your turning radius is just about 17.39 inches which is actually one of the smallest turning radius is in its class and we were taking this around the parking lot and it had no problem maneuvering around the parking lot and I mean pretty much that is what this Ionic is going to be very good at if it is going to be very good in the city if you are a city driver the Ionic is going to be perfect for that and then also the weight of the Hyundai Ionic I did also want to mention that it is just about 3,000 pounds for this model that we do have here which is pretty much very similar to something like the Toyota Prius right in line at just about 3,000 pounds as well all right, so now let's talk about the pricing of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. So the pricing of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid is going to start at just about $22,200 if you do go for that base blue trim. And it can top out at just about $30,500 if you do step all the way up to that top of the line limited trim with that ultimate package. So that is going to have a lower starting price than something like the Prius by just about $2,000. And the high end trims are going to be just about four to $5,000 less expensive than something like the top of the line Prius but it is going to be very competitive when it does come to the overall features list all right so let's look at the pricing tag right here real quick so right here it is going to say that we do have the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid SEL that is the middle of the line trim right here and right here it is going to say pretty much a few of the standards features list so you can pretty much screenshot this and look at it from your phone or your computer real quick and our total price of this vehicle is going to be $26,015. So just over $26,000 for this vehicle. And I feel like that's a pretty decent bargain. Right here, it is also going to tell you your fuel economy. We'll talk about that just a little bit later on as well. And right here, it is going to also tell you where most of your parts are from. And it is going to tell you that its final assembly point was in Ulsan, Korea. All right, so now let's talk about the competition of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. So the Hyundai Ionic Hybrid actually really only has one direct competitor, and that is going to be the 2017 Toyota Prius, which is also going to be a very similar design to the Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. So both vehicles are going to have sort of like this lift back hatchback design towards the rear end there. Now, you can also cross shop the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid with a few more vehicles as well. For example, the 2017 Ford Ford C-Max, the 2017 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, and even in some respects the 2017 Kia Niro. Alright, so now let's look at what's under the hood of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. Alright, so to open up the hood of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic, you just locate your Hyundai logo right there and slightly above it to the right is going to be your latch. You're going to push that latch to the left and then lift the hood right on up. Now you are going to need a hood prop for this hood and the hood is actually fairly light. I mean, it's not heavy at all i feel like i could lift this up with just one finger so that's a good thing so i'm going to put this hood prop in and then we'll talk about what's under the hood
All right, so now that we have the hood prop up and the hood's nice and wide open and airy, let's see exactly what's under the hood of this Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. So to pretty much kick it off real quick, I did want to say that the Hyundai Ionic is the world's first car offered in three electrified versions. So you are going to see that you do have the Ionic Electric, which is going to be a fully electric vehicle. You are also going to have the Ionic Plug-in Hybrid, which is going to be pretty much an electric vehicle when you want it and a gasoline vehicle when you need it and then you're also going to have the ionic hybrid which is the vehicle that we do have right here now i'm not sure if you heard that but the gasoline engine did just turn right on there because it does pretty much take its turns between that electric motor and this gasoline motor um, when it is at idle so let's first talk about what this gasoline engine actually is so the engine that is right here under the hood is going to be a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated gasoline direct injected atkinson cycle four cylinder engine and this is going to be the only available engine setup for this hybrid now that engine is going to produce just about 104 horsepower at a pretty late 5700 rpm and just about 109 pound feet of torque at a pretty adequate 4,000 rpm now before you say okay this vehicle only produces 100 horsepower and 100 pound-feet of torque are you serious right now that engine is going to be paired to a electric motor which is going to produce an extra 43 horsepower and an instant 125 pound-feet of torque and that is going to be located right under your rear seat passengers your rear seats it is going to be right under there but that engine compared with that electric motor is going to produce a total of 139 horsepower at that same 5,700 RPM and a whopping 195 pound-feet of torque at an adequate 4,000 RPM. So that is a much better number than that 1.6 liter naturally aspirated gasoline direct injected engine will do on its own. Now. Pretty much what that means is that this vehicle, like I said, is a hybrid, so it is going to get amazing fuel economy. We're all going to talk about fuel economy in just a little bit, but this setup is going to produce tons of torque. Like I said, 195 pound-feet of torque, so this vehicle is going to be extremely peppy around the city. So if you do want this vehicle for the city drives, it's going to be perfect. On the highway, it is going to have adequate acceleration based off of the numbers, 139 horsepower. It's not going to be tons of power, but it should be just enough power for passing people on the highway or on long city roads. All right, so that electric motor is actually going to be activated from zero RPM all the way until 1,800 RPM. So pretty much what that means is that you are going to, like I said, have very instant torque. So it is going to be perfect for quick city jolts. Also, the Hyundai Ionic comes with a six speed dual clutch transmission as opposed to a continuously variable transmission. So the Hyundai Ionic, as opposed to being paired to to something like a CVT which sort of drones and really drains out the fun nature of a vehicle it is going to be paired to a dual clutch transmission so it is going to be a little bit more smooth and it's driving dynamics and it is also going to be ever so slightly more engaging um, than some of your other hybrid entries out there also this vehicle is going to come with front wheel drive only there is not going to be any all-wheel drive available for the 2017 hyundai ionic which is just a little bit disheartening but then again you have to keep in mind that this is a hatchback if this vehicle was an suv or something like that i would have definitely liked to have seen that all-wheel drive option but this is taking more of that car approach so all-wheel drive is sort of acceptable not to have in here but you do have to keep in mind that if you are living in those colder climate areas where it does snow a lot the ionic may not be be the ideal vehicle for those winter months since it does not come with that all-wheel drive option also zero to 60 times if you are wondering is going to be just about 10.8 seconds now that is not going to blow your hat off of your head or rock your glasses off your face but i mean it's an adequate time especially when you are considering its competition the prius is at just about 10 and a half seconds so i mean this is pretty much right in line with zero to 60 times with something like your prius but it is going to be slower than something like a c max that c max is actually surprisingly peppy with a zero to 60 timer just at 7.9 seconds seconds so if you do want the peppiest of the bunch definitely go for that c-max but the ionic is going to be very adequate in that respect
All right, so now let's talk about the fuel efficiency of the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. And this is probably gonna be the main reason why you're going to buy a 2017 Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. So let's first open up this right here and to unlock this, pretty much what I did is I came to the front doors right here and then I just pressed this button right here and it unlocked that gas cap right here so this is going to open up right here and it is going to be that lockable feature so no one can just walk up and open it right on up so it is going to be having that locked feature which is a very very neat feature so right here you are going to see that you do have a twist cap design to pretty much open up that gas nozzle and to start putting in gas in there i would have definitely liked to have seen a capless design on the ionic hybrid especially since that is pretty much what a lot of automakers are going towards but you still get a twist cap design right here you'll pretty much take that off and hook it right on there to prevent it from scratching up your paint right there so the fuel economy of the 2017 hyundai ionic hybrid if you do go for the base blue trim is going to be just about 57 miles per gallon in the city 59 miles per gallon on the highway and a whopping 58 miles per gallon combined yes you heard me right 58 miles per gallon so pretty much what that means is that the hyundai ionic blue is going to be the most fuel efficient vehicle in america and that's very 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 impressive now you can't take this into consideration we are talking about full-on electric vehicles because those full-on electric vehicles are don't run on gas so this vehicle is the most fuel efficient vehicle because it does have that gas motor in it all right so if you are looking at something like the vehicle that we do have right here which is the sel trim or even the limited trim is going to come with the same fuel economy rating and that fuel economy rating is going to be 55 miles per gallon in the city 54 miles per gallon on the highway and 55 combined so it is going to have ever so slightly less fuel economy than something like your Hyundai Ionic Blue but it is going to still be very very fuel efficient also if that is compared to something like the Toyota Prius's ratings the Ionic actually gets two miles per gallon more combined on its highest efficiency models which is very impressive as well and then if you are looking at something like for example the top of the line trims the Ionic gets three miles per gallon more combined on the top of the line trim of the Ionic when it is compared to the top of the line trim of the Prius so that is also another plus for the Ionic Ionic. And fuel economy is going to drop from your top of the line limited and SEL trim to the lower of the line blue trim mainly because of the wider tires found on the limited trim as well as the SEL trim as opposed to the more narrower tires found on that blue trim. Also the extra weight added to that limited and that SEL trim may also take a cut of that fuel economy as well. Now, the fuel tank size of the Hyundai Ioniq is going to be just about 11.9 gallons, which is actually pretty small for if you are looking at vehicles as a whole that is very small but what you do have to keep in mind is that this vehicle like i said can get up to 58 miles per gallon if you do go for that blue trim and 55 in the case of this sel trim so pretty much what that means is that you can get up to just about 650 miles on a single tank of gas if you do go for this sel trim and if you do go for that lower of the line blue trim that base model you will get 690 miles on a full tank of gas so on a full tank of gas you're gonna get 690 miles which is very very impressive and is very class competitive with its competitors it actually beats a lot of its competition when it does come to range as well so Hyundai definitely knows what they're doing when it does come to this vehicle also this vehicle does come with regenerative braking system and that regenerative braking system is going to be on all of your wheels right here and this is going to have your disc brakes so your vehicle all of the four wheels are going to have disc brakes and they are going to come with that regenerative braking system and pretty much what that regenerative braking system means is that it is going to send the power back to your electric motor so any and any braking power that is lost when you're braking energy is going to be lost but it is going to capture that energy and send it right back to your electric motor which is going to extend your range as well as your miles per gallon. Also, I did want to mention that this vehicle also comes with blue drive technology, which means that it is going to give a lower pollution rate and a higher performance rate. So pretty much this little sticker right here, or not sticker, this little plaque right here on the side of your front fender is going to say blue drive. And that's pretty much what that does mean right there if you were curious. All right, so now let's check out the rest of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic. 
All right, so now let's talk about the interior design of the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq. Now, before we talk about the interior design, I did want to talk about the door handle design on the exterior right here. And it does have a very attractive look to it. But if you do want an even more attractive looking door handle design, you do have to step up to that top of the line limited trim and it will come with sort of like a chrome accenting on the upper portion right here but every trim of the hyundai ionic is going to come standard with your smart key access system right here so you just push this button and it will unlock your doors beeping twice indicating unlock you close it right on up if you press it again it will beep once indicating that the door is locked all right so let's unlock the door indicates it is unlocked by beeping two times and then looking at your door panel design right here it looks decently attractive i do like what they did go for with all of these very geometric shapes on the door panel and it does make the door panel look a lot more upscale especially considering the price of this vehicle so on the upper portion right here are going to see that you do have your soft to the touch materials here it's not extremely plush but it is definitely soft for if you are resting your elbow up here and it is going to have a decent graining to it it sort of has like this sort of like a sporty car graining on the top i'm not a huge fan of it but it does look decent on there and then if you do come right here you are going to see that it does have sort of like this recycled plastics material look right here and it, this actually i believe consist of the recycled plastics on this portion right here but this soft touch portion is going to consist of 25 percent of raw materials such as sugar cane which is also a pretty neat feature and then right here you are going to have your door handle design right here and it does also look very attractive i like how hyundai didn't skimp out and make this a black past plastic but they did actually paint it with the same metallic look as the door handle so i really love that feature touch right there and then right here you are going to have your door handle very traditional open I do like how it does have this curve up so it is going to be a lot easier to open than some other door handles that are just on this lower portion and then right here you do have a little cutout right here indicating that you do have your speaker right here and the Hyundai Ionic does come with a total of six speakers unless you go for that top of the line limited trim with on that ultimate package and it will give you that eight speaker infinity premium audio system you also are going to have another speaker right down here adding up to that six speakers and then you are going to see that you do have all of your window and mirror controls as usual right here you aren't going to have any power folding mirrors on i believe any ionic trims i am going to have to double check on that but i'm pretty sure no ionic trims are going to come with your power folding mirrors but they are going to come with powered mirrors so if you do want to pretty much adjust the visibility on that that is going to be powered and you are going to have your power door locks your window locks as well as all of your window controls right here you are going to have auto down on your front driver window but you are not going to have any of those features on any of your other three windows but they all are going to be powered still if you do look right in here you are going to see that you do have a little cubby right here with a rubberized bottom material right there and another thing that i did want to point out is that this armrest portion right here sort of has like a levitating like design right here so your arm can't just swoop right under there so it does have a very awesome and pretty much futuristic look right there i really like that touch that hyundai did go for and then right here is going to be soft to the touch materials and it does feel decently high quality and it does have sort of like a um leather imitation feel to it and then right here are going to have hard to the touch materials pretty much mimicking the design going on here it's just not going to be soft to the touch and it is going to run right below your all of your power necessities on your door panel also right here you are going to see that you do have this little cutout right here which is going to give you some storage for any maps or anything that you would like to throw in there any knickknacks and then right here you are going to have your bottle holder right here so we are going to see if our water bottles do fit we do have our traditional 16 ounce water bottle right here and it fits in that bottle holder no problem and then if you were wondering how a one liter water bottle does fit we have one right here and that also fits in there decently it is going to be protruding out ever so slightly since the speaker is just a little bit in the way but it does fit so that is a good thing to know and then you also are going to have another little storage compartment right there to throw a few more knickknacks inside of and then right here you do have a reflector right here so if you are on the side of the road and you have your door open vehicles will be able to see you at nighttime which is also a very very neat feature all right so looking at your seat design right here you are going to see that you
you do have a two-tone seat design here. The Hyundai Ionic actually comes with a total of two color options. You are going to have either your beige option right here, which is what we have right here, but it does sort of have like a gray look to it. I'm not quite sure why Hyundai calls it beige because to my eyes, this looks very gray. Tell me what you think this looks like, but I'm pretty sure this looks gray, but Hyundai does call it beige. And then on the outer portion, you do have that black. And then you, the second color option that you have is a full on black seating surface. And I do really like this two tone seating that they are going for here. It is not going to be perforated because it is going to be cloth. But if you do want leather seats, you do have to step up to that top of the line limited trim. If you do go for the blue or the SEL, you are going to get these cloth seats. And they are going to have the bolsterings that are going to be that black color with sort of like this texturing similar to what's found on the upper door panel design right there. So at least you do see a lot of consistency throughout the cabin. You also have your black headrests right here. So it is going to be carrying over from here, which is very good. So that is also a very, very neat feature. If you are looking at all of your seat controls right here, you are going to have powered seats and that is going to be standard on your SEL trims. If you do want powered seats on your blue trim, you cannot get them. It'll, it'll, it is only going to be your manual adjustability, but you do have your powered seats on your SEL as well as your top of the line limited trims. So you do have forward and backwards. Like I said, you do have height adjustability. You also have back adjustability forward and backwards, and you also have some lumbar support here as well. But we are going to sit inside of the vehicle right now and pretty much see what the comfort actually feels like when you are sitting behind the wheel. All right, so now let's talk about the front seat comfort inside of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic. But the first thing I did want to mention is that the seats inside of the Hyundai Ionic are going to have powered adjustability for your driver's seat, but your passenger seat is not going to have powered adjustability. It is going to be manual adjustable on all trim levels of the Hyundai Ionic, I believe. So even if you go for that top of the line limited trim, you're still going to have that manual adjustable front seat passenger. But if you are sitting in the driver's seat, you are going to be welcomed with your powered seat it is not going to have any memory adjustability you do have to step up to that top of the line limited with that ultimate package if you do want that memory adjustability for your driver but you are going to have power adjustability here I believe it is going to be 10 ways so you can move it forward and backwards as well as support for your thigh here so you do have power adjustability for that you can raise that I do have it in its highest position right now and you can lower it a little bit more and you are going to see how much room we do have here and you can pull it up quite a bit to where it is going to be touching the bottom of my thighs, which is also a very, very neat feature. So if you do want a lot more thigh support under your thighs, the Ionic is going to be perfect for that. You also have your height adjustability for the seat itself. So you can raise the seat up quite a bit here and enough to where you actually can begin to start crushing your head there. So if you are going to be a shorter driver, you should be able to be perfect inside of the front seats here. Also, you do have your backrest power adjustability here. So you can move this backrest a little bit closer right here or you can move it back and you also have your headrest here which is not going to have power adjustability It's going to be manual adjustability and it is only going to be able to move up and down not in and out unfortunately but sitting on in your headrest here you are going to see that you do have a decent headrest here it is a little on the firm side for my liking I definitely like to feel a headrest that isn't as firm so it is a little bit more on the firm side than what I do like out of my vehicles but one thing you are going to notice is that you do have your powered lumbar support here so if you do want to get a little bit more lumbar support or a little bit less lumbar support is also going to be perfect for that as well now i did also want to mention the seat comfort inside of here and sitting inside of the seats they do have a decent plushness to them as well so they are going to have a fairly decent plushness to them and support is also going to be pretty good in these seats and another thing i did want to mention is how wide this door does open it is sort of opens in sort of like a 90 degree angle so it is going to have a very very wide opening here so it is going to be very easy to get in and out of the Hyundai Ionic especially when you do step in and out right here you are going to see that the roof line right here does sort of have its highest point which is going to be just about right here so stepping in and stepping out is going to be amazing and I really like how Hyundai did choose to add that on the Hyundai Ionic also I did want to mention the steering wheel column here you are going to have manual adjustability for your steering wheel column you can move it up as well as push it down and push it in and out so you are going to have tons of range for telescoping as well as up and down motion here as well. So overall, if you are going to be a shorter driver or even a taller driver, the front seats, at least from the driver's side, should be very accommodatable. 
All right, so now let's hop right on inside of the Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. And step in height is actually very decent in here. You do have to fall in just a little bit since it is a sedan, but it's by no means horrible. It's actually a pretty good step in height. So let's close up the door right here. And it does have a very solid sound, and that's pretty much expected since this vehicle was first introduced for the 2017 model year. All right, so sitting inside of the Hyundai Ionic, at a first glance, the interior actually looks fairly attractive looking here. It actually has a very clean look to it, but also has a very modern and somewhat of a sporty look in some terms especially with this flat bottom steering wheel but let's grab the key fob right here and this is what the key fob does look like inside of the hyundai ionic and you are going to have a brown key fob here it sort of has like a beige brown key fob and you are going to have your hyundai logo on this side with sort of like an imitation leather material right here you are going to have some of that chrome accenting running all the way down the side right here and then right here you are going to have your lock your unlock your trunk release button so if you just hold that down it will unlock your trunk it's not going to open it up the hyundai ionic actually doesn't come with a smart trunk access system it is only going to have this unlock portion right here and then you are going to have your panic alarm right there at the bottom. And then you are going to have your physical key. If you press this button and pull this portion out, you will have a physical key if the electronics do fail on you or something like that. So let's put your foot on the brake right here. And then all you do is push the button right here to start up the vehicle. And there we go, the vehicle is started up and well, there's no engine noise to really hear. The only indicator pretty much telling you that this vehicle is ready to drive is that little green vehicle right there. If you see that little green vehicle with that arrow pointing forward and backwards, that pretty much means that this vehicle is ready to be driven. So that is going to be your pretty much indicator since you don't really have an engine noise to tell you that the vehicle is on. All right, so if we do look at the left side of your door panel right here, you are going to see that you do have your AC vent right here. And your AC vent is going to have sort of like this it sort of looks a little white but it's not white it sort of has like a silver accenting going around it's sort of like a gray brushed aluminum metallic look going around there and you are going to have your ac vent control right here if you do want to turn off your ac vent you push it to the left it turns it off and if you want to open it you push it to the right so it's a little different you don't have a little slider on the bottom so hyundai is trying to be a little more innovative with their ac vents right here and then also you can tilt it up and down and it has a decent range of motion right there also right here it is going to be soft to the touch all the way in here so that's also a pretty neat feature how soft to the touch materials even carry over all the way to the little corners right here also if you do look down here you are going to have your dimming for your seven inch gauge cluster display right here so you can make it dimmer or you can make it brighter and then right down here you do have your blind spot monitoring if you want to turn on or off your blind spot monitoring and then you do have your lane departure warning right here and then right here you do also have your traction control off button if you do come down here you are going to see that you do have your trunk your hood release right here so you can pull that to open up the hood and then right here you do have your parking brake and then right here you do have your fuel tank opening right there and then you also have your 12 volt battery reset button if you do want to reset your 12 volt battery and overall the left side right here is actually very well equipped and it pretty much makes the hyundai ionic very well equipped also now if we do sit back right here and look at our steering wheel right here you are going to see that you do have a steering wheel that may actually look fairly familiar to you um i did recently do a quick walk around of the hyundai elantra sport and this steering wheel looks very very similar to what's found on that hyundai elantra sport it is going to have that flat bottom steering wheel right there and it is also going to have this silver accenting right here as well as sort of like this T cutout right there in your bottom spoke right there as well and then right here you are going to have all of your audio controls you do have your voice command button as well as your mode button your volume controls your tune controls right here as well as your hang up and your pickup buttons right there and then if you do move on to the right side you do have your page button which is going to control right here and you also have your cruise control 
button right there as well as the little more controls to pretty much go through this screen right there which we'll talk about in just a little bit and you also have a little bit more of your cruise controls right there and this is going to be your adaptive cruise control so you can set the distance as to how close you are going to be to the vehicle in front of you so that's also a pretty neat feature right there and then you could cancel all of it right there and now right here you're also going to have quite a bit of sculpting and then another thing that I did notice about the Hyundai Ionic that is different about that Elantra Sport is that it doesn't have your perforation on this portion right here pretty much where you are going to be holding the steering wheel so it is not going to have that perforation there but overall your steering wheel is a very attractive design also the leather does have a very smooth feel to it but it isn't plush because I mean this isn't a luxury vehicle this vehicle still has budget in mind all right, so now let's listen to the horn inside of the Hyundai Ionic. And it does have actually a very loud and confident sound to the horn. It is going to pretty much get that very large truck right out of your way. You can just pretty much be like, get out of my way. And I really like the sound of the horn inside of the Hyundai Ionic. It's actually very surprising. It's not going to have that overly high pitched noise like some compacts do tend to have. And it's not going to be overly low pitch either to where it sounds like a giant truck, but it is going to definitely get that very large F-150 right out of your way. All right, so let's now look at the gate cluster design right here inside of the Hyundai Ionic. Now we do have the SEL trim, so you are going to have a much larger seven inch LCD TFT screen right here. So if you do look to the left right here, you are going to have your tachometer is pretty much what this is. It is going to have your charge right there and you are just going to have your eco and then your power. So if your vehicle is doing some sort of regenerative braking, it is going to probably go into this charge portion. If you are driving very efficiently, it's going to be sticking in this eco. And if you are pretty much flooring the vehicle and giving it all the beans, it is going to be in that power portion right there. And it's pretty much telling you, okay, you probably don't want to drive like this because you are going to hurt your miles per gallon. So right here, you are going to have your speedometer and your speedometer is going to be very front and central inside of the gauge cluster. Also, I am noticing that you do have more of those blue accents coming right here and wrapping right over, pretty much encompassing your center speedometer right here. So looking at your speedometer, it is going to be counting up in increments of 10 right here and it is going to be a 7 inch LCD screen right here. So right here it is going to tell you how much range you do have left on a full tank of gas. So this vehicle does have just about 590 miles of range. And then right below there it does say zero kilometers per hour. And then right below there you are going to have your fuel readout right there. Pretty much how much fuel you do have in your tank. I would have liked for that to be a little bit more accurate. It looks like it only has quarters. It looks like it counts up in quarters. I would have definitely liked to have seen that maybe in one eighths or something like that. That is definitely something that hundreds they should consider in future model years of the Ionic. But coming over here to the right, you are going to see that it does tell you that the vehicle is in park. You are going to have your instrument display right here that is going to pretty much tell you all of your details. We're going to go through that and that is going to be controlled from your steering wheel. And then right here it is going to tell you that you are in EV mode, in eco mode. And then right here it is going to tell you the exterior temperature, 81 degrees, and how many miles this vehicle does have on it, which is 37 miles. And then right there it will tell you your battery temperature. All right, so let's go through that little inf information screen right there. So to go through that information screen, you have to press right here on your steering wheel. This is going to be your page button. So that will take you through your different pages. So you do have a total of three pages on the Ionic. You are going to have your driving page. You are going to have your safety technology page. And then you are going to have all of your settings right there. So if we go to this first page, you are going to have your average speed your average miles per gallon right here on the first slide if you go down one and I am doing that by pressing this button right here if you go down one it is going to go to your trip meter right there and then if you go down again it is going to go to your second trip meter and then right here you are going to have a digital readout for your speedometer so I do like how Hyundai does give you that right there you're also going to have your driving style pretty much telling you how you are driving if you're driving economically normal or aggressively so that is also a pretty neat feature so if you're driving aggressively it is going to tell you right there if you're driving economically it'll tell you right there as well and then right here it does tell you pretty much where the engine flow is going currently so if you are driving down the road and let's say you're driving and going around a turn or something it'll probably power more to your left inner wheel or something like that or just different things to help you drive around so 
and it's pretty much going to tell you exactly where all of that power is going on the Hyundai Ionic. So that's also a pretty neat feature. And it's telling you right now that power is going to your battery, it looks like, which is located right beneath your rear seat passengers. All right, so let's get out of that and let's go to your next page. And right here we do have our lane departure. So if you do start getting out of your lane, it is going to pretty much give you a pretty much a visualization right here as to where you are on your lane. And if you are starting to swerve out of your lane, it is going to be pretty much beep at you and be like, okay, time to get right back in your lane you're starting to swerve around it's getting a little scary here and then if you do click down it is going to tell you your tire pressure right there as well and if we press the page button once more it is going to go to your user settings your driver's assistance technology your door settings as well as your light settings convenience settings service intervals and just it's going to tell you all of the information that you will pretty much need to know and if you do want to click on something you just click right in on that button so you just press ok on the button and it will take you right in there. And there's not really much animation on here at all. It's actually very snappy and responsive. And I really like how snappy and responsive that screen actually is. All right, so now let's move on to the center stack design right here. So right up here, it is going to be in a very stacked motion right here, pretty much why it is called a dashboard stacked design. So right here, we do have your touch screen right here. And then a separate portion, you do have your all of your radio controls as well as your fast access buttons. And then right below there, you do have all of your climate controls right there as well. So I really like how Hyundai does pretty much divide it into three portions, makes it extremely easy for you to use and pretty much glance right at, pretty much know where everything is, especially since everything, every button does have its own identity, except for these buttons, you do have to pretty much look at them and know where they are. But you obviously know that this is going to be your vol volume, your tune. These are going to be your climate control knobs right there as well. But if we do look at our 7-inch screen right here, and your 7-inch screen is going to be only on your blue and your SEL and also your limited trims if you do go for the normal package for your limited trim. If you do step up to that ultimate package, you are going to get a much larger 8-inch screen, which is also going to come with built-in navigation. But right here, we do have the base touch screen right here so this is going to be your seven inch touch screen this is going to be pretty much found like i said on that base blue trim as well as on the middle trim sel and it is going to have swipe functionality so you can pretty much swipe through your radio presets right there you also have your hd radio on your radio screen right here as well as your different band you can also scan and pretty much everything you expect your radio to do you can do right here if we do press home and it will take you straight to home and it's actually fairly responsive it does make that beep noise right there as well indicating that you did press on something on the screen and then right here this is your home page it is going to have your radio right there you click there and take you straight to your radio you're also going to have all menus so if you press all menus it is going to show you your hybrid readout let's press on that and it does have to load just a little bit there through that screen there's not really much animation at all it's very simple slide it's pretty much goes right there so right here we do have our fuel economy right here and we are averaging 2.1 miles per gallon that is not real fuel economy since this vehicle has literally only like 37 miles on it i believe or something like that and it was really driven only in the parking lot for a very limited amount of time this vehicle actually just came to the dealer so that is not the actual miles per gallon you are going to be seeing out of this vehicle and then right here it is going to tell you pretty much how equally you were driving and then right here it is going to tell you your energy flow right there pretty much where your energy is going to be flowing on inside of the Hyundai Ionic so if we do press the back button it will take us back to that screen you do have a fast access to your radio you can swipe the screen it is also going to give you your quick guide Sirius XM data as well as your voice commands and your setup so the Hyundai Ionic does come with satellite radio which is also a pretty neat feature so let's pre press back right there and it is going to take you back to your home screen. You also have my menus, your apps. You do also have tons of apps in this vehicle. And then you also have your setup. So I am going to start using some of these quick access buttons here as well. So looking at your quick access buttons, you do have, like we were just at our radio. You also have your media. We do not have any media files connected. You also have your phone button. We do not have any a phone connected currently. And then you also have your seek and track buttons right there. If we press the apps page, you are going
going to go to your apps. We do have Android Auto as well as your Apple CarPlay, your Quick Guide, your Sirius XM data, which I did just show you earlier, and then you also have your voice commands. And then right here, you do have your setup button right here. So if you do press setup, it is going to pretty much take you straight to here. And this is going to be where your sound is going to be. So you can pretty much adjust where you want your sound to be on inside of the car. That's also a pretty neat feature. And if we do go back right there, and another thing you can change is if you don't want the beeping to be on, turn that off, no more beeping. And I think I like it without the beeping. So right here we do have the display right here. You also have Bluetooth, your phone projection. So if you do want your phone to be projected onto the screen inside of the car, you can do that. You also have your home screen, your voice recognition. You also have your date and time, your language that you speak. And then you also have the keyboard functionality, pretty much what you want your keyboard to look like, your screensaver. So you can change your screensaver inside of the Ionic if you do want to it to have an analog clock a digital clock or no screen saver at all I'll go with a digital clock and then we can go right on back and then you do also have your system info right here as well if you want to know anything about that as well so overall the screen inside of the Hyundai Ionic is extremely intuitive if you do want to know about pretty much how Android Auto does work as well as Apple CarPlay definitely check out my Hyundai Elantra SE full in-depth review I do go over that a little bit more in depth and I do have a Samsung Galaxy S7 so that is going to be covering Android Auto. So if we do come down here, you do also, like I said, have your volume knobs right here, as well as your tune knobs right there. And they do have a very solid feel to them. I actually really love the feel to them. They are a little on the small side, but they don't feel cheap at all. And they do have sort of like that glossy piano black in the center with that metallic going around it. And then right here in the lower portion, you do have all of your AC controls right here. It is going to reflect a little bit of a glare off of it, but it is going to be a sort of like a matte screen screen right here so this is going to try to prevent as much glare as possible so right here you can turn on the AC for just your driver or have it on for both sides you can also sync the AC so you can see right here that it is on 65 we can change this to also 65 by pressing sync change that to 65 and that's also a pretty neat feature you can change your temperature right here warmer or cooler and you also have warmer or cooler here as well and I really like how Hyundai does give you your dual zone automatic climate control on the Ionic SEL. I have to double check to see if that is a standard equipment on all of the Ionics. I believe it is only on the SEL and your top of the line limited trims, but do not take my word on that. I am going to pretty much put a little something right here on the bottom, letting you know the real answer to that. And then right here, you do have your fan speed. You can turn up your fan speed. And it is actually pretty strong. I really love how strong the AC does feel in this vehicle. Hyundai plays no games when it does come to their AC. It has very cool air and it is very fast, responsive, and powerful. If you do come down here, you can also have your auto right here. As you can pretty much turn on your air conditioning unit on an auto system so it is pretty much going to read the outside temperature and then tune your inside temperature to what it believes it should be on you also have a off button if you do want to just turn off your climate control right there or if you do want to turn it back on you do I believe just turn the knob and it turns right back on and the buttons actually have a very good tactile feel to them I really love the feel and the feedback that they do give you and then you do have your front window defroster your rear window defroster you also have your AC button right there if you do want to turn on your um, AC and then right here you do have your in-car circulation right down here you do have your 12 volt power outlet you do have two 12 volt power outlets down here as well as a USB port and a auxiliary port down there as well so that's also a pretty neat feature and then you do have a rubberized portion right here that you can store your phone in and I do have a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge so we are going to see how my phone does fit inside of this compartment right here and my phone fits no problem right inside of there so that is definitely a plus it actually has quite a bit of space left so that is definitely a first for vehicles that I review a lot of vehicles don't really have enough space for a phone but this vehicle has more than enough space for even maybe two phones there now if we do look right down here you are going to see that you do have your gear selector and this is going to be a very traditional gear selector you do not have any push button gear selector or anything like that on the ionic hybrid it is going to be a very traditional gear lever and it is not going to be 
get it either. It is going to be just a pull forward and backwards. Very simple, clean, sophisticated, and easy to use. Looking right here, you do have your heated seat controls, three-stage heated seats. You do not have any cooled seats on the Hyundai Ionic SEL, as well as you do not have a heated steering wheel either. I would definitely like to have seen that as standard equipment on the SEL, especially since I do live in South Florida and I pretty much never use a heated seat. But if you are going to be using cooled seats, you cannot get that on the Hyundai Ionic. I believe you can't get it on any trims of the Hyundai Ionic, but I will have to double check on that. So looking at your gear selector right here, you can shift right into reverse by just shifting and pulling right on down. And you are going to have your reverse camera right here, and it is going to have your trajectory. So you can turn right there, left and right. You're also going to have your distance markers right there, pretty much telling you how close you are getting to the vehicle behind you as well. And I'm not sure if you guys can hear that beeping, but the vehicle does beep pretty much telling the people outside that the vehicle is in motion and it is reversing since it doesn't really have an engine noise when it is going to be reversing i believe it does run on your electric motor when it is reversing so let's put that right back into park you also have neutral and drive down here so if you do put it into drive you can put it into your sport mode to the left and shifts up to go up a gear and pull down to go down a gear and then when you do put it right to the left it does go right into sport so it is going to say sport right there so you are in your sport mode and this vehicle is probably going to make the steering wheel yep a little bit more heavier it is going to have an artificial heft to it so it is going to have a little bit more of a sporty feel and also you are going to notice that your gauge cluster does change a little bit here as well so i am going to show you right here i'm going to put it back into normal mode that's what your normal mode gauge cluster looks like counts up in increments of 10 has a blue illumination if you do put it into sport mode it is going to have a much more of a sporty feel right there. It is going to give you a tachometer and it is going to give you your miles per hour readout right there. And it isn't going to tell you your miles or range in this portion. It is going to tell you it right up there. And it is going to give you a little S right there telling you that you are in sport mode. So overall, I really like how Hyundai does give you a sport mode inside of the Hyundai Ionic. So let's put that right back into park right there. And overall, I really like the overall feel that Hyundai does go for with the Hyundai Ionics interior. So the upper portion dashboard materials right here is going to be soft to the touch. Actually, very soft. I really like how soft Hyundai does make it. Also, this is sort of going to have like a hood design to it. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but it is going to have a little bit of a hood right here. So it is going to try to prevent glare from coming above. And looking at it head on, it's actually not much glare on it at all. And then right here over your gauge cluster right here you're also going to have another hood but it is going to be hard to the touch i would have definitely liked to have seen that soft to the touch and overall i really love the design that hyundai did go for right here it is going to be hard to the touch as well which is pretty much typical for most hyundai products they are going to pretty much cheap out right here on this lower portion right here but this upper portion is going to be all soft to the touch except this little portion cut out right here you can see like the little seam right there this portion is going to be hard to the touch so that is also a little more of a cost cut right there also another thing that i did want to mention is that the interior plastics inside of the hyundai ionic were actually a lot more efficient than you may think even though the exterior styling is very efficient the interior is also very efficient on side of the hyundai ionic as well so the hyundai ionic's interior is actually made of recycled plastics powdered wood and volcanic ashes which decrease the interior plastic weight by 20 percent which is pretty impressive so hyundai doesn't just make the ionic drive efficiently and look efficiently but the materials inside of the interior are also extremely eco-friendly as well and also the headliner inside of the Hyundai Ionic is consisting of biofabrics as well as the carpets inside of the Hyundai Ionic as well. So I believe this carpet is going to be consisting of your bio fabrics as well. So that is very, very considerate on Hyundai's end. And it's pretty much going to be your push towards a much more of a eco-friendly feel and pretty much is going to introduce you to the Inco friendly vibe that the world is soon going to have to come to. If we do come right down here, you are going to see that you do have a cup holder right here as well as another cup holder behind it. This cup holder is going to be in sort of like sort of like a cup shape if actually, if you know what I mean, this is going to be the top of the cup with the bottom of the cup. So I really like how Hyundai did add that. So we are going to see how our 16 ounce water bottle does fit in here and it fits in there with 
ease. And then if we do have our much larger one liter water bottle, it does also fit in there with ease as well. And then right back there, you do have another cup holder. We will see how our 16 ounce water bottle fits in there perfectly. And then our one liter water bottle also fits in there perfectly. It will be a little bit in the way when you are shifting this into drive. It may be just a little bit in the way, but overall, I mean, it's nothing to complain about. At least they do make the cup holders large enough because a lot of automakers just really do not pay attention to the cup holders and make them way too small. And you can also eat, pretty much store your key right in there as well. And then right here, Hyundai also loves to market how they do have a tablet holder right here. So you can pretty much slide in a tablet right here. And it is going to have a rubberized floor inside of there. So that is also going to be a pretty neat feature. But if you don't have a tablet, you can pretty much put anything in here, a pamphlet, a book, or even you can even put something like a magazine in here, for example. And then right in here, you do have your your cubby design it is going to have felt lining on the bottom there is not going to be any charging ports inside of there so that is a, di a little bit disappointing would definitely like to have seen a USB port or at least a 12 volt power outlet inside of here but you do not get any of that it is going to just be this awkwardly shaped cutout right here and it is not going to be very very efficient man if we do put our water bottle in there it is not going to close if you were wondering so it isn't extremely deep it is going to go up just about to a little bit over my wrist right there and the upper portion right here on that center armrest is not going to have any sliding adjustability so it is only going to open up and down and it doesn't ratchet up and down or either so I would have definitely liked to have seen that but it does have a slight plushness to it and it is going to be your polyurethane leather imitation material right there and if you do come right up here to your mirror design right here it is going to have a black plastic frame to it i would have definitely liked to have seen a beige plastic frame pretty much matching what's going on on the dashboard design and pretty much the rest of the interior and this vehicle is also going to have your manual dimming rear view mirror right there as well you're not going to have any home link or your blue link telematics on this mirror design here that is going to be reserved for your limited trim and then if you do look right here you are going to have your sun visor right here which is also going to have a mirror so you can open up your mirror and look at yourself and then right here you do have a light so a light isn't going to turn out automatically when you open this up you do have to turn on the light here manually by yourself and then when you do close this up and close it up it will turn off your light which is a pretty neat feature there and then if you do look right here you are going to see that you do have some more interior illumination right here and these are going to be incandescent bulbs if you do want your LED bulbs you do have to step up to that top of the line limited trim and then right here you do have a few more of your interior lighting features so you can pretty much keep your lights on turn them on with the doors or just keep them completely off and this is going to be a smooth to the touch plastic and then right here you are going to have a felt lined and damped sunglass holder right here so you can put your glasses right on in there and it's going to be no problem there whatsoever also looking at your headliner here like i said it is going to have a pretty decent softness to it but one thing you are going to notice is that the hyundai ionic does not come with a sunroof and the sunroof is actually going to be reserved for your limited trim so if you do want a sunroof you do have to go for that limited trim and that sunroof is going to be power adjustable and the headliner feels decent like i said it does have a soft feel to it but it is a little rough as well i'm not a huge fan of it but like hyundai did say this is going to be consisting of eco-friendly materials so it isn't going to be the plushest of materials but it is going to be very eco-friendly so that is definitely what hyundai is trying to go for with the overall interior design of the hyundai ionic so if we do talk about visibility inside of the Hyundai Ionic looking out your rear view mirror right there you are going to see that you do have a little split portion right there where your spoiler is going to split your rear window design right there and that is going to pretty much hinder rearward visibility but luckily like I said Hyundai does give you that reverse camera on your 7 inch LCD screen which does have decent rendering it's not the best rendering in that reverse camera but out of the reverse camera the screen does look very crisp crisp vibrant and it is 
going to pretty much be very easy to use at first glance. Looking at your eight pillars right here, they do have a pretty wide base. It's a little bit wider than I would like to see. So cornering inside of the vehicle is going to be a little bit more covered up and not pretty much as easy as something that does have a thinner eight pillar at the lower base portion. Also, your mirror is not going to be located on the door panel, but rather right here closer to your eight pillar, pretty much right there, pretty much making your a pillar have a thicker base so I definitely would have liked Hyundai to add that mirror lower down here it probably would have made the vehicle a little bit more aerodynamic as well but nevertheless Hyundai still gives you your blind spot monitoring I'm not sure if you guys can see that but I'm gonna open up the window real quick here for you guys and zoom in and right there you do have your blind spot monitoring I'm not sure if you guys can see it but right there those two little dots right there they are going to light up if a vehicle is in your blind spot and that is going to be a pretty neat feature there and that is going to be i believe standard on your sel trim you did that blind spot monitoring is not going to come on your base blue trim unfortunately so that is definitely something you do have to keep in mind and that is also going to come with your rear cross traffic alert so if you are reversing out of a parking spot and a vehicle perhaps is driving by and you do not see them the vehicle will stop and prevent you from hitting that oncoming vehicle all right also up here you do have some microphones right here so when you are talking through your bluetooth it will read right through there but talking about bluetooth i did want to um, work with your voice command functionality right here so i'm going to press the voice command right here so we can pretty much see how responsive the hyundai system is here so let's see how hyundai did implement it on the ionic please say a command tune to fm 89.1 this feature is only available after connecting a bluetooth device would you like to connect one no so as you can see the voice command is very responsive it pretty much knew exactly what i was saying the lady does have a little bit of a robotic voice she is like wah, 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 me, wah. but i mean it's fine i mean you can't ask for everything out of the hyundai ionic but at least it is very responsive it does have to load just a little bit between the um pre pretty much between your pronouncing and stuff like that but that is pretty much the case with a lot of voice command systems you do pretty much have to allow it to load and pretty much process what you did say all right so let's hop on to the passenger side and see what hyundai has to offer for the passenger all right so now that we are on our passenger side let's now open up the passenger side door but first let's look at our door handle design right here and it is going to also have that smart key access system the same system that is found on that driver's side that i did demonstrate for you earlier so opening up the door a very smooth and pretty much effortless open i really love how hyundai did pretty much refine as to how this door does open pretty much opens like it was never shut i just really love how this door does open just very seamlessly but if you do open it up all the way you are going to see that it does sort of have like a very right angle right here so it's going to be extremely easy to get right inside of the hyundai ionic also right here you are going to see that the door panel and materials are pretty identical to what's found on the driver's side but one thing you do have to pretty much keep in mind is that you are going to have your door lock controls here and your power window controls right here as opposed to all of those other controls found on the driver's side but your powered passenger window is not going to have auto up nor is it going to have auto down but it is still going to be powered and the speed is decent if it did have that auto functionality it would have made it much much better all right, so let's hop right on inside of the Hyundai Ionic. And the door has that very similar solid sound to it. And sitting inside of the seats here, very similar to pretty much what's found on the driver's side. Now, this seat, like I said, does have that manual adjustability as opposed to that powered adjustability. So looking right here, you're going to see that you do have your manual height adjustability right there. So at least they do give you height for your seats. And they're also going to give you your backrest control located right there. And then you're also going to have your forward and backwards control right there on that glossy black portion right there that is going to slide forward and backwards for you 
All right, so looking at your dashboard design inside of the Hyundai Ionic, it looks fairly attractive looking here. It is going to have soft to the touch materials all over the dashboard right here, pretty much right up until right there, and then it turns black, and it is all going to be hard to the touch plastics. But your visibility, like I was talking about earlier, is pretty decent inside of the Hyundai Ionic. I mean, this A-pillar does slope back quite a bit, so your windshield is going to be pretty far away from you. I mean, you pretty much have to, I actually can't reach it. You have to like stretch out of your seat to touch where the bottom of the window is. So it is going to have a very pretty much sloped back profile when it does come to the front end. It is going to make it a lot more aerodynamic. And visibility, if you are looking out the front, you can actually sort of see where the hood ends. I mean, it does slope down quite a bit towards the front, but it's not terribly bad like some other vehicles can be. All right, so right here, you also have your mirrors. Like I said, they are a pretty decent size right there as well. And then looking at your B pillar right here, your B pillar is also a pretty decent size. It's a little, just ever so slightly on the thick side, but it's not terribly bad at all. And then if you are looking right down there, well, that's where I have my main problem. That C pillar is just thick. I mean, I feel like it's too thick. I don't know why Hyundai didn't add a rear quarter window on side of the Hyundai Ionic. They do give you one window here, another one there, and then another one right there, but I feel like they should have totally given you another window right there, even a mini small window, just to break that up, because I just feel like that is such a blind spot right there. And then if you do look out the back, you are going to see that you do have two window panes right there being split in half with your rear spoiler, and you are going to have your headrest that are a little on the large side, so they are going to be pretty much hovering up like that little portion of the window right there so it is going to make rearward visibility ever so slightly tight but luckily like i said hyundai is going to give you that reverse camera all right but coming right back over here and sitting in the passenger seat you are going to see that you do have a glove box here it is not lockable unfortunately i would definitely like to see a lockable glove box but if you do open up the glove box here it is damped, but it is not lined with felt, and it does have enough space to pretty much store whatever you may need inside of here. And let's close that right on back up. And I overall, the interior of the Hyundai Ionic, especially from the passenger side, is very, pretty minimalistic. It's not that much. Obviously, you do have all of this information right here. But overall, on this side, it's very clean. And it's pretty much going to get you from point A to point B seamlessly and very easily. Also, up here, pretty much the same story. You do have your mirror with your lighting right here that does turn off when you do close up the sun visor right there. So I really like the interior inside of the Hyundai Ionic. I, I can't stress enough enough as to how much I like it. I really love how clean, sophisticated, mature, and pretty much has a very, like I said earlier, conservatively elegant interior ambiance to it. Also, another thing I did want to mention, I believe that this giant portion right here is going to be what Hyundai also uses to pretty much help with the adaptive cruise control that this vehicle does have. So I feel like that is also going to help with that as well as your lane departure warning. I believe that is also going to be aided with whatever system is located right here. Because when you do go on the interior, it is sort of like this very large block right there. And I wasn't quite sure what that was, but now I'm actually starting to think that's probably what that is. So that is also a pretty neat feature that Hyundai does even offer that for you. All right, so now let's talk about the back seat comfort inside of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic SEL. So you are still going to have your cloth seats on the back seats in your SEL, and these cloth seats are going to have a very durable feel, very similar to what's found on the front seats as well. And your bolstering is not going to be very prominent at all on your lower portion, nor on your upper portion right here for your torso. So they are not going to be like the bucket seats found up front, but rather more like a bench seat style introduction additional compact vehicle fashion but sitting back here you are going to see that your seats aren't going to be extremely supportive but they are going to have a decent plushness to them I mean they're very accommodatable for back seats they are nowhere near the comfort of the front seats obviously but the back seats do feel like they are going to be very comfortable at least on the outboard sides for long road trips also sitting back and putting my head on the headrest it actually feels a little bit softer than the ones found up front I actually prefer the headrest 
headrests found back here and i feel like they do curve around my head just a little bit better than the ones up front that could just be my imagination but personally i do feel like these headrests do feel just a little bit more supportive and in a way more comfortable as well and your seat bottom cushioning also has quite a bit of thigh support here it's actually quite surprising as to how much thigh support hyundai did decide to throw on these seats so i really like how you are going to have a decent amount of support under there as well as your back portion right here is going to have a pretty decent amount of lumbar support here so that is also a very good plus right there as well and i do have this front seat adjusted to my comfort so you are going to see that i do have quite a bit of leg room here just about one third to quarter of my arm just fit right there so that is also a very good thing and the door still opens fairly wide for the back seat passengers as well not as wide as the ones on the front seat but they are going to have a decent opening and your roof line also does slope down just a little bit so when you are getting in and out of the back seats you do have to watch your head just a little bit but it's not terribly bad i can definitely tell that hyundai tried their best to make this roof line as squared as possible as you can see right here it is going to have a very square cutout but due to the nature of the vehicle since it is this sort of like a lift back hatchback design you are going to have to watch your head when you are getting in and out but overall when you do get in and out of the vehicle it is very easy to get in and out and the step in height is also very good here as well since your battery is going to be located under the back seats so they are going to be positioned quite a ways off the ground so it is going to feel like you are sitting more on a chair as opposed to sitting in a chair and i actually prefer this sitting position as opposed to something like how a coupe would have in the back seats where you pretty much feel like you're nuzzled in the back i really like how right here you are going to have a very open and airy feel of the cabin and a little bit more of a commanding view of the road from the back seats so that's also going to be a very good thing about these rear seats so overall the back seats of the 2017 hyundai ionic are actually very very impressive i'm actually going to give hyundai quite a few props for these back seats All right, so now let's hop on into the back seats of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic. So on your back seats, you're not going to have that smart key access system, just your normal door handle right here. So let's open it right on up. And looking at your door panel design on the back seats, it is going to have a very similar design to what's found on the front seats. Right here is going to be that same hard touch plastics. Up here is also going to be unfortunately hard touch plastics as well. I would have definitely liked to have seen Hyundai add that soft touch plastics to the back seats. It is actually a little disheartening that Hyundai did not offer that soft to the touch material on that upper portion. Looking at your door handle right here, you are going to see that you do have a very similar door handle to the front seat. I really love the design that Hyundai did go for with these. And you're also going to see that you do have that metallic brushed color right on your door lock as well. So Hyundai did not cheap out in that respect. Coming right on down here, you are going to have a soft to the touch elbow rest right here. And it is also going to have a leather imitation to it in that same beige in color, similar to what the interior looks like right there. Sort of like a beigeish grayish in color right there. You're also going to have this smooth plastic right here, as well as your window switch controls right here and your windows are going to be powered up and down but they are not going to have auto functionality unfortunately and then right in here you do have a little cubby right here to throw any knickknacks that you may need to throw in there and i'm actually a little curious as to if my phone fits in here so if i do throw my phone in there it is going to fit in there with no problem so that's also a plus right there and then looking right here this is also going to still be that hard to the touch plastics as well as your lower portion is still going to be your hard to the touch plastics and then in the back seat you're only going to get one speaker you're not going to get a sub tweeter if you do go for that top of the line like I said limited trim with the ultimate package you are going to get a sub tweeter up here so it is going to be an eight speaker premium audio system by infinity and overall the door panel design on the back seats is pretty decent also right here you do have a bottle holder so we are going to see how my 16 ounce water bottle as well as my one ounce water bottle fit right inside of there and then you also have a cubby on the right side as well as a cubby on the left side there as well all right, so let's hop on inside of the Hyundai Ionic. And you don't really have to duck your head that much at all. I mean, getting out of the vehicle, you do have to duck your head just a little bit, but getting in, it's not bad at all. So let's close up the door real quick. 
And closing up the door, the back seats has a very solid sound, very similar to what's found on the front seats as well. And looking at pretty much the space that you do have back here, it is very, very spacious in the back seats. I'm actually very surprised. So right here, I can fit just about one third of my arm, like I said earlier. And then if you do put your feet under the back seats, you will also see that I do have tons of space here as well, just to pretty much wiggle around my feet. Also, thigh support is incredible back here. You do have a perfect amount of thigh support right under your thighs and right here like I said you are going to have your battery under here so you're going to be sitting just a little bit higher up in the back seats right here you are not going to have a rear air vent system on the Hyundai Ionic SEL you are going to have to step up to the top of the line limited trim with that ultimate package to get your rear AC vents back here and you're also not going to get a 12 volt power outlet to charge your phone so I would have definitely like to have seen Hyundai add that but your headroom inside of the Hyundai Ionic let's see what our headroom is looking like inside of here so if we do turn the camera right here you're going to see that i have a decent amount of headroom right here i probably have just about two inches of headroom maybe like one and a half to two inches so that's decent i mean it could definitely be a little bit more but obviously this is a lift back hatchback design so your rear roof line is going to slope down a little bit but by no means is it horrible my head is not even touching it at all so Hyundai did cut it out perfectly if I do look at it a little bit more in detail you are going to see that this little cutout right there I'm not sure if you guys can see that shadow that is a cutout to pretty much allow for the top of the ceiling to be just a little bit more accommodatable for taller drivers and if right here you also have this center armrest that does pull down this is going to be only available on your SEL and your limited trims if you do go for that base blue trim you're not going to get this center armrest right here with your two cup holders and your two cup holders do look fairly accommodatable so we are going to see how our water bottles do fit in there we do have our 16 ounce as well as our 12 ounce water bottle so let's see how our 16 ounce water bottle does fit inside of here and our 16 ounce water bottle fits in there with no problem and then if we do grab our one liter water bottle right here let's put that one on in and that one unfortunately is not going to fit and it looks like this one is larger than this one so it's definitely not going to fit in this one either so luckily hyundai is still giving you a center armrest here since a lot of vehicles aren't even really giving you a center armrest even though i would have liked to have seen this as standard equipment i don't know why they leave it for the sel trim i would have definitely liked to have seen this as standard equipment on that blue trim and you don't really have a center storage compartment here either i would have liked to have seen an opening right here so you could store a little bit more of your knickknacks back here if you are a backseat passenger but luckily hyundai does make it fairly plush so when you are resting your elbow on here it's going to be very comfortable when you are doing that closing that right on back up you are going to see that you do have your headrests for your middle seat passenger as well as your back seat passengers there it is going to have a decent arc to it i did talk about headrest comfort earlier and it was fairly comfortable it actually feels a little bit more plush than what's found on the front seats headrests and that may be my imagination but it may actually be true so you are going to see that you do have a relatively low hump right here the hump is not that bad at all it is going to affect your knee room and your leg room just a little bit so when i do move on to the center which i'm going to do just about right now and when i do sit in the center seat well it's not the most comfortable sitting in the center seat i really would say to reserve the center seat for short road trips like really short road trips like less than 20 minutes because i can definitely begin to start feeling a cramp if i sit here for too long in this center seat but like i said that hump is not too obtrusive and if you do put your feet on top of it your knees are going to be a little bit more in the air than something like if you are sitting to the left so like i said leave this center seat for smaller passengers or shorter road trips also right here you can see that you can possibly fit another passenger a similar sized passenger to me to the left of me as well as to the right of me which is also a pretty neat feature one thing like i said earlier is that the hyundai ionic does have more width than the toyota prius by just about two inches and more interior volume than the toyota prius by a pretty decent amount as well so hyundai is definitely trying to aim at all of its competitors to really try to make it the best in class also right here you are going to have a storage net right here to store whatever you want instead of there 
and that is also a pretty neat feature you only get that on the passenger side you do not get that on the driver's side but at least Hyundai does give you this plastic portion right here so if you do have babies or somebody or people that do kick the back seats it is going to pretty much mess up this and not the actual fabric of the seat all right so now I'm going to sit all the way over to the right side and this right side I have the seat all the way back in its tracks to pretty much where if you're sitting up there you have to be extremely tall probably closer to the six and a half foot range maybe even 6.6 .6. so if you are six foot six and i'm sitting in the front seat and you are 510 sitting in the back seat you will still have just about maybe half an inch not even maybe quarter of an inch of leg room back here it's not extremely accommodatable if you are going to have an extremely tall driver or front passenger up there but what you do have to keep in mind is that hyundai does give you little cutouts right here so if they did keep it like this it would have been impossible to fit back here but hyundai does give you little cutouts right there making it a lot easier for you to sit back here i would have definitely liked to have seen hyundai though go for a little bit more of a longer rear seat but the wheelbase is actually very class competitive with the rest of its class so i guess just if you're going to have extremely tall passenger in the front seats definitely keep in mind that you cannot have an extremely tall passenger in the back seats as well and you are also going to see that you do have a light back here this is going to be an incandescent light and it's going to be a single light and you are also going to have some more of your handles around here it is going to be for your front passenger and your rear seat passengers all right so now let's check out the rest of the 2017 hyundai ionic and i definitely want to check out the cargo area so let's go right on to that all right, so now let's talk about the cargo area of the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq. All right, so there are a total of two ways to open up the trunk of the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. So the first way isn't actually going to open it up, but it will unlock the trunk area. And that is just by holding down right here. It will flash your hazards, indicating that your tailgate is unlocked. And then the second way is to locate the Hyundai logo right above the lettering of Ioniq. And you will pretty much just press on the plastic pad that is located right in there next to your reverse camera it will pop up your trunk just ever so slightly and then you just push it again and lift it up the rest of the way so you are going to see that you do have a fairly large cargo area right here and it's actually pretty accommodatable as well you are going to be looking at just about 26.5 cubic feet of space with the rear seats folded up and when you do compare that to the rest of its competition, the Prius is going to have ever so slightly more with 27.4 cubic feet of space, but that's only if you go for the high efficiency model. If you do go for the rest of the Prius models, you are going to be getting 24.6 cubic feet of space, which is actually less than what's found on the Hyundai Ioniq. So the Hyundai Ioniq is actually in a way more practical than the 2017 Toyota Prius. Also, if you are taking into consideration a vehicle for example like the Ford C-Max it is going to have a cargo foot rating at just about 19.2 cubic feet of space and then if you are looking at something like the 2017 Kia Niro which I did recently review for you guys that is going to have a cargo rating of just about 19.4 so the Hyundai Ioniq really outclasses a lot of its vehicles and is just right in line with that Toyota Prius and in some respects is larger depending on what trim level of that Prius you do get now when you do fold down the rear seats this is when things just get a little bit of a guess because when you do fold down these rear seats they do fold down a decent amount they're not extremely flat you are going to see that you do have a little bit of a lip right there a little bit more than i would like to see i would have liked to have seen it a very flat load for because if you do push this down you are going to see that a bottom of your seat does show a little bit so that's why hyundai does give you that to protect that bottom of your seat so with those rear seats folded down what you are going to be looking at is just about 49.8 cubic feet of space to just about 53.1 cubic feet of space now the main reason why that is an estimation is because hyundai did not disclose that information so i did have to pretty much search through a bunch of forums to find out the exact cubic foot rating with the rear seats folded down but when i do fold down this rear seat as well i did want to see pretty much how so it does also fold down because i do have that right 
front passenger seat all the way back in the track so this rear seat will still fold down and will come in minimal contact with that front seat and this is going to be your 40 60 rear split folding seats and like i said it is not going to be a flat load floor from your cargo area to your trunk to your back seat but it is going to be a decent amount of space also another thing that i did want to point out is just how large the opening is right here so it's actually very reminiscent of the 2017 hyundai veloster in which the way this portion does open up it does sort of have like that pane right here and then another pane up here with that very large portion right there blocking out for your spoiler and what you are going to see is that if you are loading in very large things for example something like a bicycle it will fit in here no problem since the opening is extremely large and I would imagine a bicycle would probably fit in here if you do lay it down standing up it might be a little bit of a problem since the roof line of this vehicle does slope down quite a bit towards the rear but if you do lay it down on its side it should fit in here with no problem also i am going to do my how much stuff can you fit in that trunk test so we are going to see exactly how much stuff you can actually fit inside of the trunk of the 2017 hyundai ionic so definitely stay tuned for that video as well but right over here i'm going to see that you do have slightly rough material pretty much the same material you are going to see pretty much on every other vehicle and then right here you are going to see that you do have a fuel filler release handle i'm not quite sure what that is but hyundai does give you that in your trunk if you are looking for that and then right here you are going to have all of the mats for the car so they are going to say ionic on them all of them and i'm going to throw that up there real quick so you guys can see what's under here so under the load floor you are going to see that you do have a foam insert here and it is going to come with a few of your dealer accessories for example your wheel locks here and it is also going to come with a fix a flat kit which is located right here so this is going to be your fix the flat kit and then if you do lift out this foam insert right below there you're going to have even more space and it's actually going to probably be enough space to fit a spare tire as long as you take out this foam insert and then right in front and front and central we are going to have this optional cargo net which is going to be a dealer accessory so if you don't want this cargo net you do have to ask for that at your dealership and you will also get a cargo cover here as well it looks like but it looks like our vehicle did not come equipped with that or maybe it's just not in the vehicle yet it may be also another accessory that you have to ask for i have to double check on that maybe it's just still in the dealership and they didn't put it in the car yet since this vehicle isn't fully ready for sales yet and then overall you are also going to see that you do have a light on the right side here but you we're not going to have a light on the left side so hyundai does only give you one light inside of the cargo area so i would definitely like to have seen them add two lights back here and that is going to be an incandescent light not an led light and your lift gate is also going to have a little helper handle right here to help you close the trunk and it is not going to come with any powered closing functionality here it is still going to be a manual close which is just fine since it is going to have these struts right here which is going to help with the ease of closing All right, so now let's talk about the safety of the 2017 Hyundai Ionic. So as of the recording of this video, the Hyundai Ionic has not been tested by the IIHS, nor has it been tested by the NHTSA just yet. But Hyundai is very confident that the Hyundai Ionic is going to achieve top safety awards from both of those crash test agencies. Also, there are a total of seven airbags located inside of the Hyundai Ionic. You are going to have your driver's airbag, your front passenger airbag, as well as your side curtain airbags running on both sides of the vehicle. And you're also going to have your driver's torso airbag as well as your front passenger torso airbag as well and another airbag that hyundai does throw in on the hyundai ionic on all trim levels is going to be your driver's knee airbag which is also a pretty neat feature and i'm glad to see that since a lot of other competitors do only offer six airbags but the hyundai ionic is going to have seven airbags which is a very very good thing also you are going to have a standard reverse camera on all trim levels of the hyundai ionic no matter what trim you do go for so if you do go for that base blue trim or the very top of the line limited trim you are going to have your reverse camera also if you do want blind spot monitoring with your rear cross traffic alert that is not going to be available on your blue trims you can only get that on your sel and your limited trim so i definitely would like to see hyundai in future model years add that on your base blue trim there and you're also going to get tons of active safety features such as your automatic emergency braking your smart cruise control your lane departure warning and even dynamic bending high intensity discharge headlights now if you do want those dynamic bending 
HID headlights, you do have to step up to the very top of the line, limited trim with that ultimate package, because if you do go for this SEL with the technology package, you are still going to get that automatic emergency braking, your smart cruise control, and your lane departure warning, but you are not going to get that HID headlight option, you're still going to have your projector beam halogen headlights. And I definitely would have liked to have seen Hyundai add those HID headlights on this SCL trim. But overall, the Hyundai Ionic is a very safe vehicle. And I feel like Hyundai is definitely going to achieve those top safety awards, especially considering the rest of their model lineup are actually fairly safe. So I am very, very confident that this vehicle is going to be a decently safe vehicle. So I cannot wait until this vehicle is tested by those agencies. So I can give you guys a full and pretty much accurate representation as to how this vehicle is going to fare but overall the Hyundai Ioniq should be a very safe vehicle all right so now let's talk about the ground clearance and towing capabilities of the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq so the ground clearance of the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq is going to be just about 5.3 inches which is just about 0.2 inches lower than something like your Toyota Prius which does have a ground clearance of 5.5 inches also, towing for the Hyundai Ioniq is not recommended, but if you are looking for vehicles that are going to be hybrids and you can tow with, I definitely recommend checking out the Toyota RAV4 hybrid as well as the Nissan Rogue hybrid since both of those vehicles are going to be crossover-based hybrids and are going to have all-wheel drive options. All right, so now let's talk about my recommendations for the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. So I recommend going for that base blue trim if you are on a budget and pretty much want to get the max amount of fuel economy out of your hybrid, since that is going to be the most fuel efficient car in America if you do go for that base blue trim. But you can go for that SEL trim if you want a little bit more cabin comfort technology and basic safety systems, for example, your blind spot monitoring. But I strongly recommend going for the vehicle right here, which is the SEL with the technology package since it is going to add a lot more driver's aid as well as more safety technology and it's only going to add just about a thousand dollars to your total price which is going to push the total price of the Hyundai Ioniq to just about twenty five thousand dollars which is actually a pretty decent bargain I really like how much vehicle Hyundai does give you for your money also if you do want to go all out on your Hyundai Ioniq I strongly recommend going for that top of the line limited trim with that ultimate package since it is going to add tons of safety technology amenities cabin comfort Comfort and even more style since it is going to come with much larger 17 inch alloy rims as opposed to the 15s found on the rest of the Hyundai Ioniq hybrid lineup. All in all, the all new 2017 Hyundai Ioniq is a great choice if you want a very safe, fuel efficient and practical compact hybrid. Despite Hyundai reserving all of the Ioniq's active safety features for the top of the line limited trim, the Ioniq really outshines its competition when it does come to overall fuel efficiency and value for your money. Not to mention its more widely accepted exterior styling as opposed to other hybrids on the road, the all-new 2017 Hyundai Ioniq is a tough vehicle to overlook in the compact hybrid segment and may just be the hybrid to be. Well, that's it for this full review. Comment and tell me what you would like to see in future videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. This is Marcus, and thanks for watching Drive and Be Driven. Keep it positive, and I'll see you next time. Are you confused as to how these people got this overall rating? Click the link in the description or go to driveandbedriven.com to get a full explanation as to how the Drive and Be Driven overall rating is calculated. You can become a Drive and Be Driven driver today. Just simply click the subscribe button and you will become a part of the Drive and Be Driven circle. Subscribing will allow you to stay up to date with the Drive and Be Driven YouTube channel. Thank you to all of my current Drive and Be Driven drivers for driving me towards my goals and dreams. Stay subscribed for more awesome videos like this one.